Good morning everyone and a warm welcome to our YouTube morning worship service at Worcester Park Baptist Church. My name is Jeremy and I'm one of the worship team here and I hope and pray that today's service will be a great blessing to you. Today is the last in the series looking at Isaiah chapter 43 which we've been following over the past few weeks to fit in with our new motto text for the year from verse 19 which is the Lord says I'm about to do something new it is beginning to happen even now don't you see it coming later in the service Caris our families and children's worker will bring us the all-age talk and Gavin our pastor will bring us God's message to us we will also show a video from the London City Mission which is one of the missions that we as a church support. After the service, we invite you to join us for refreshments on Zoom when we'll hear some more about the work of London City Mission from one of their mission workers. And details for joining will appear on the screen after the final prayer. Well, we would love to hear from you either during the service or afterwards, and you can do this by leaving a message in the YouTube chat, or you can go to our website, which is wpbc.org.uk. But first, let's commit our service to God in prayer, and I'll use the first three verses from Psalm 40 to help us. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. God listens. He is a God who hears our cry. He is a God who turns his face towards us, who gives us his full attention. Today, he invites us to speak, to sing, to worship. If you're happy, to praise him. If you're worried, to pray. If you're in trouble, to confess. If you're ill, to ask for help. We pray that many will see what you have done and be amazed and will put their trust in you, O Lord. For the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Let us turn to the God who hears. Amen. So I'll now hand over to Kat to lead us in singing two songs. Firstly, Great is Thy Faithfulness, followed by Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. And then Caris will bring us the All Age Talk. <laughs> Changes not thy comfort. 
Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Come thou, be born now with reverence and fear. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister His grace. Morning everyone. I wonder if you have ever been rescued. Could have been something quite dramatic that you needed rescuing from or something quite small and maybe a bit insignificant. But I imagine all of us have needed rescuing at one time or another. Maybe we've locked ourselves out of a house and someone has had to climb in through an open window to open the door and help us out. Maybe we've got stuck somewhere and someone else has had to come along to give us a hand. We could have been stuck in a big muddy puddle, not able to get out, or stuck up in a tree where we've climbed up high and now we can't get down without someone else to help us. Maybe you've been in a situation where you've been really unsure about what to do, about what decision to take, where to go next, and someone has come along with some really good advice and rescued you from that tricky situation. Or maybe in your homeschooling you've just come across something that you haven't understood at all and someone else has had to come along and explain it to you and help you to understand it so that you can get to the answer and see what you have to do. We all need rescuing sometimes, don't we? And also we love to hear about great rescues. So this last week, Steve and I were watching The Perfect Planet on TV and we were amazed at watching the rescue of the baby elephants. They had been left orphaned because of a great drought in the country where they lived, but now they'd been rescued and they were living in a safe reserve, living with keepers 
who actually stayed with them 24 hours a day. They slept next to the elephants and they fed them these great big huge bottles of milk. They played with them, they cleaned them and fed them and generally looked after them and brought them back to life again. It's a wonderful rescue story. So if you haven't seen it, catch it up on the BBC iPlayer if you can. Well, how about going back to Woody and Buzz in our Toy Story films? Do they ever need rescuing? Now, I do need to add here as a little aside that I know that Buzz and Woody are not characters from the Bible. But their story is so interesting and so relevant to our themes at the moment that we're going to stick with them just for one more week. Here we go. If you remember, in the first Toy Story movie, Buzz and Woody start off not liking each other, but eventually make up their differences and become friends. But then Buzz is taken by the very unpleasant boy next door, Sid. He lives next door to Andy and Sid has very desperate plans of what he wants to do to Buzz. So Woody sets out to rescue him but then also finds himself stuck in Sid's bedroom. And worst of all for both of the toys, it's moving day and his family are moving to a new house. And if the toys can't escape, they will be left behind, which is a terrible thing to happen to Andy's favorite toys. But there's one thing that later on in one of the movies, Andy says about Woody. Something that makes Woody special is, he'll never give up on you, says Andy, ever. He'll be there for you, no matter what. So Woody doesn't give up on Buzz. He and the other toys in Sid's room hatch an elaborate plan to rescue Buzz. And by this time, Buzz is strapped to a rocket and he's in the garden and Sid wants to set light to the rocket and launch him into space. But Woody and the other toys manage to distract Sid, get Buzz away from the garden and chase after the moving van to be with Andy. Phew, that is a great rescue and it's a new beginning for Woody and Buzz together as friends in Andy's new house. Now today, in our Isaiah passage, we're thinking about God being our rescuer, or another word for that is our redeemer. God was telling the Israelite people through our passage that he would rescue them and save them from the land that they were stuck in, and he would bring them back home to the promised land, to safety and peace. Even though the Israelite people had turned their back on God and they'd left him behind as they'd made choices that were not the right ones for them, God would not give up on them. He would always be there for them. And this afternoon in our family Zoom time, we're also thinking about how Jesus rescued Peter and how he gave Peter a second chance, not leaving him behind but being there for him. So if you come along this afternoon, you can find out more about that story with us and join in with our family Zoom at four o'clock. But for now, let's just have a think together. Do we ever feel like we might be a bit stuck and we need God to come and rescue us? Do we need to remember today that God will never leave us no matter what and he will always be there for us. And do we remember to thank God enough for the great ways in which he has saved us? Maybe today we need to remember that that great quote from Andy about Woody could also be said of God. God will never give up on you, ever. He'll be there for you, no matter what. Thank you, God. When it feels like I am falling, I 
And this world is overwhelming. Help me fix my eyes on you and trust in the God who can't be shaken. Oh, who can't be shaken. Greetings, Worcester Park Baptist Church. London City Mission thanks you for your continued years of financial and prayer partnership support to us, enabling us to continue reaching out to Leash Reached across London to find faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
My name is Andrew Barney. I'm a London City missionary working in North Kensington, that's West London, within the area where the Grenfell tragedy took place in 2017. My specialism for missionaries three is working with the homeless and marginalised groups throughout this community and region. Matthew chapter 9 verse 37 to 38 Jesus said to the disciples the harvest truly is plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest field an overview of what I do with London City Mission for the next five years missionaries are to work within their borough reaching out to multiple churches to develop partnerships so that more laborers more churches will be mobilized into the community to reach least rich groups so at this moment of time part of my work is doing district surveys, getting familiar with the whole of my community and the borough, um, mapping out, identifying evangelical churches and churches within that area, seeking to make contact with church leaders, to have conversations, encourage them and partner with them, you know, in the aim of supporting them to be mobilised, sharing our 185 years of expertism of reaching out to these rich groups in the community. Galatians chapter 2 verse 10, the Apostle Paul is notes in Galatians that when he had his council meeting with, with the um, officials in Jerusalem, Peter had the gospel to go out to the circumcised and then Paul was commissioned to go out to the Gentiles, the uncircumcised. So they both shook with the right hand of fellowship, but they said to the Apostle Paul, only they asked him to remember the poor, the very thing that he was eager to do. And this is the same thing of our ministry, our heart is reaching the poor within the community. Before the COVID and the lockdown happened in 2020, I was partnered with a local church in North Kensington and the work I do was be training the leadership team, encouraging the congregation to learn about outreach within their community. The work I would be doing, I would be door, doing door-to-door -door ministries, going out, knocking doors consistently at least three, four times a year, developing friendships, being able to speak God's word into their lives, pray with individuals and invite some to church as well as the Bible study. I also walked in the community and became familiar with shopkeepers and many other people, establishing wonderful friendships and inviting people to be a part of God's story, a part of God's community, his church. Um, it was always about pointing people to Jesus. It was always about being that light. John 6, 63 says, it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is of no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. That's Jesus' words. So it's important that the gospel is proclaimed, it is spoken. It's important that people hear the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has been at the heart of this work within this community and some of the wonderful fruit I've been able to see the Lord do is a young lady I met in 2018 Christmas. She poured her heart out to me where she was in the midst of substance misuse. Over the course of time, I started visiting her, journeying with her. She started attending church. She came to the back end of her Alpha course and she gave her life to the Lord. Another fruit is a wonderful person I met, you know, he used to attend a centre where people could go in the daytime. He came down to me one Christmas time again, he spoke with me, and then eventually over time through us spending time discipling and speaking God's word and doing Bible studies, he gave his name to the Lord and he is still continuing with that church being discipled. Also, another fruit is somebody I met while I was in Wormwood Scotch Prison ministering, and they're out there now, and another person, a female who I met in the community she had prior to this left church years ago but i continued to make contact with her continued seeing her in the community and she rededicated her life back to the lord jesus christ there's many more stories to see the lord doing wonderful works within this community but come lockdown the challenges that has been taken place romans chapter 10 14 how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed 
And how are they to believe in him in whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? The difficulties because of the COVID, it brings a challenge to us to see how do we proclaim and preach the gospel and reach the least reached. Now, with the lockdown, we've had to reduce to finding creative ways to do online Bible studies, online catechism courses where we ask questions and we get the answers from the Bible, Zoom meetings, telephone calls just to encourage individuals. Um, I've been supporting churches by doing food banks or going out and delivering food parcels to other people in the community. Also shopping for vulnerable adults and the elderly. Um, there is many vulnerable people in this community that you know need support. So whatever we do, whether in word, in thought or deed, we do it for the glory of the Lord. Also pastoral support. This is an ongoing thing. You know, many people need to be encouraged at this difficult time and at this very lonely time. It is also, it's very difficult to keep contact with some contacts that we already made because of the isolation, because of the uncertainties of how to plan weeks, you know, unfortunately, you know, it's very hard. And with this, I find myself as like we're all being called a priest unto our God, is to be faithful and continually laboring before God, lifting up these individuals to God, trusting that by his Holy Spirit and by his power, he would continue to speak into their lives and be a blessing them as we all seek to serve the Lord as faithful servants. Finally, I just want to encourage you all. Matthew 5, 13 to 14 tells us, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, now how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. If you are the light of the world, a, sorry, you are the light of the world, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Now we know salt. Back in the Middle East, back in those times, salt is used to preserve food, to stop food rottening, to stop food from decaying away. Likewise, we are the salt, we bring hope, we bring good news to people, hopefully so they don't rot away and wither away with all the traumas and difficulties in life. As a light, a city on a hill, we are a light pointing people to Jesus Christ. So let me encourage you, I ask you to pray and ask God how he is able to use you to serve him at this time of lockdown. See in what ways he, you, he can use you to reach out to your local community, which he loves and which you love dearly. Pray for them and when opportunities arise, do share the gospel as best as time permits you to do. And I would say, if you'd like to find out more about my ministry in West London, just send me an email and I will add your name to my prayer mailing list to contact you with my prayer letters. You can get in touch with me at andrew.barnett at lcm.org.uk or you can speak to Joanna or Martins and they will send your email on to me so I can get contact to you. And also to find out more about London City Mission, you can go to our website at www.lcm.org.uk. Thank you very much for your time and I look forward to being with you on Sunday. God bless you all. There's just a couple of notices to mention today. Firstly, for parents, there'll be another family Zoom this afternoon at four o'clock. And just to remind you that this will be the last one for a while. And secondly, well, it's hard to believe that in a few days time it'll be Lent. And so for the next few weeks on Sunday mornings and in connect groups, we will be following a course from the Bible Society called the Bible Series which will look at themes such as the origin and meaning of the Bible through to the Messiah and love and hope and home. In a minute, we'll show a short promotional video to introduce the course. And just to say that if you're not part of a connect group and would like to join one to follow the course in a small group of people, 
then please get in touch with us in the YouTube chat or at our website or email minister at wpbc.org.uk and we'll try and link you up with one of the groups. This is an excellent resource to explore the Word of God, the Bible, together. Our reading today is taken from Isaiah chapter 43, beginning at verse 14 and reading until verse 28. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I will send to Babylon, bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians. In the ships in which they took pride, I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your King. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army, and reinforcements together and they lay there never to rise again extinguished snuffed out like a wick forget the former things do not dwell on the past see i am doing a new thing now it springs up do you not perceive it i am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland The wild animals honour me, and jackals and owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Yet you have not called on me, Jacob, You have not wearied yourself for me, Israel. You have not brought me sheep for burnt offerings, nor honoured me with your sacrifices. I have not burdened you with grain offerings, nor wearied you with demands for incense. You have not brought any fragrant calamus for me, or lavished on me the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your offences. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remember your sins no more. Review the past for me. Let us argue the matter together. State the case for your innocence. Your first father sinned. Those I sent to teach you rebelled against me. So I disgraced the dignities of your temple. I consigned Jacob to destruction and Israel to scorn. We thank God for his word. Amen. Wonderful. It's great to be uh, with you this morning. Thank you very much to Jeremy and to everybody else for taking part in our service today. So the title that we have today as I bring this series in Isaiah 43 to conclusion is The Lord Who Redeems Us. What a wonderful title. 
So redemption is something that is happening all around us all the time. It's something that is common to us. It's about something that is reclaimed at the cost of something else. Now, I'm not talking simply about a retail transaction, uh, your money in exchange for the item that you want on the other side of the counter. But it's a life transaction that I'm thinking of. Think for a moment of the late Captain Sir Tom Moore. He redeemed fear and sorrow as he walked his thousand laps of his garden in the first lockdown, capturing hearts and hope across the UK, UK whilst raising money for the NHS. That was an act of redemption. Life is full of redeeming moments because the God who creates this world is a God of redemption. But redemption is not easy because it's about recycling rather than replacing. As we finish our series in Isaiah 43, we hear the prophet assure the people that God will redeem them, that this is not the end of their story, that God has a plan for them. And maybe for them, this is just the beginning. Each week in our services, we featured a quote from the Prince of Preachers, C.H. Spurgeon. Karis kindly brought us a quote for each message and for each part of our series. So today, here is the final quote from Spurgeon. Spurgeon says, you have forgotten his mercy, but he will forget your sins. You have grieved him, but he still has a tender heart towards you. He will blot out your sins. Wonderful. We have three brief headings this morning. So here's the first of them. He will not remember your sins. In the Jewish Tanaka, Isaiah 43 and verse 25 translates this way. It is I, I who, for my own sake, wipe your transgressions away and remember your sins no more. Jewish scholar Benjamin D. Summer comments, the Lord will redeem them, not due to their own righteousness, but for the sake of God's own reputation. You see, God is such that God bears the weight of the creation that he has made. So even though it is us, even though it is God's own people that have sinned against him, God comes to them and God is the one that is the redeemer, the rescuer. God is the one that works at God's own expense and comes and sweeps them up and brings them back to their promised land, to their homeland, Jerusalem. It is he that comes to redeem them. God's reputation is that God is good, and therefore he acts on his reputation. The people had turned away from God, and the result was that they were exiled into Babylon. But now it was time to come home, and so he came to redeem them. He came to rescue them, to bring them to new life. For all of us, there come times in our lives, as it was here for the people of Judah, for the people of Israel, come times that there are crossroads, that there are turning points in our lives. Some of those are physical, it might be change of job, moving house. 
Sometimes they are spiritual. Might be the embarking on a newfound faith. We may become Christians for the first time. It might be that during this last 11 months of this pandemic, you've become a Christian. You have started this spiritual pilgrimage, this spiritual journey. Wonderful. Or it may, may be that you have rededicated yourself to God after a time of nominal commitment. Well, that's wonderful, too. These pivotal spiritual points require redemption. God comes in and takes us. You see, we, uh, although we think we can do lots within our own strength, it takes God to move us on, God to strengthen our resolve, God to move us from A to B. Because there's something that always needs to happen within our lives to motivate, to move us. And it's God that does that. Which comes to my second point. He will forgive us. This part of Isaiah's prophecy, uh, verse 14, begins by God naming himself as your redeemer. To name yourself as your redeemer is quite a thing. Uh, God is the one that will bear the expense of saving us. This is not a grandiose title that you would give yourself uh, to kind of make yourself look big. Your redeemer. No, this is the title of a servant. This means that you're going to give yourself over for the sake of another. You're going to give of yourself to save somebody else. The people of Israel had sinned and were in exile. Sin causes separation between us and God. God is holy and holy uh, kind of signifies separation, otherness. But God comes to deal with the sin that separates us from him in the person of Jesus Christ. In the New Testament, it's written in one of the letters called the Ephesians. It's, it's written in chapter 1 and verse 7. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. We have redemption, meaning we have been bought through his blood on that act on the cross, the forgiveness of our sins. What did it cost? What were the forgiveness of our sins? What did they cost? They cost the life of the son of God on the cross, perishing for the sins of humanity. There you go. That's the kind of cost, that it, the, the, the cost of the redeemer. That is the cost that God bears within himself. That is the price of redemption. Listen to the words of Everett Harrison when he describes what it means to understand the word redeemer within the Christian sense. He says, no word in the Christian vocabulary deserves to be held more precious than redeemer. For even more than savior, it reminds the child of God that his salvation has been purchased at great and personal cost. For the Lord has given himself for our sins in order to deliver us from them. Amen. Which leads us to think about our third point. That we might declare his praise. And why shouldn't we? If God is our redeemer. God's redeeming act will always be full of wonder. In Isaiah 43, we are reminded of the Exodus. 
that the return from exile might be likened to it. But when we get to verses 18 and 19, uh, we have there our motto text for the year. And when we read that, we can ask ourselves, was Isaiah looking forward and prophesying beyond uh, the Israelites, the people of Judah, coming out of their exile in Babylon? Was he looking toward something else, something far beyond anything that had been seen before? No great event, parting of the Red Sea. Rather, was there something else? Rather, the death of a solitary man upon a cross who would in that lonely, sorrowful act secure redemption for all humankind forever. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. God's redeeming act seen in his people, seen in the person of Jesus Christ, will always be new. Let's proclaim this good news. Tell it, live it. And when the opportunity comes, my friends, and it will, let's sing it and dance it too. So in conclusion, God is our redeemer. What can we lack? What more do we need? Amen.
Thanks, Kat. If you have any questions or feedback about today's message, you can leave comments in the YouTube chat or you can get in touch with Gavin by emailing minister at wpbc.org.uk. So I'm going to conclude our service this morning with a prayer based on verses from Isaiah chapter 43. So let's pray together. This is what the Lord says. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sin no more. Father God, send us out to love you, to receive your love and to share that love with the world. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. God bless everyone and don't forget to join us on Zoom for refreshments in a few minutes time. The details will appear on the screen below. See you soon.